Hey guys, and welcome back. How many of you have heard of the 2190 principle? So that talks about it takes 21 days to create a new habit and it takes 90 days to change your lifestyle. And so today we're going to talk about all the excuses for why we're not doing family worship. And we're going to talk about how we can combat those things so that we can start to have a new lifestyle of family worship at home. So then one of the most common excuses that I hear constantly is about time. I know that in today's world, we are combated with everything when it comes to our time. We have jobs, we have kids, they have sports, we've got school, we've got homework. There's all the things going on in our lives. But I wanted to talk to you about this. If you are struggling with finding time for family worship, it might be time to take stock of your priorities and ask God what you can let go of in your life, in your family's life, so that you can make worship time a priority. Guys, this isn't just about worshiping God. And even if it was, that would be the best reason for family worship ever. But it's also a time for us to teach our kids, to disciple them, and to teach them principles of spirituality and just life lessons. Don't let these opportunities slip you by. Our most important job as parents is to get our children ready for eternity in heaven, not getting into an Ivy League school, not doing all these other things. It's to prepare them and their characters for heaven, guys. Where are our priorities? I know at every few months, I have to take stock of all of the things that I'm committed to and how I can let go of some things so that my priorities and that our home is more focused on God and worship than it is on all of the other things that we're taking on. If you are overcommitted to things that are not important to the salvation of your children, I just want to encourage you, again, take stock of what's important. Ask God for direction. Ask God to let you know and to show you the things that you can make wiggle room or that you can just Turn that focus back to him. I know that sometimes I get too busy serving God to spend time with him. And there's a song. I'm going to link it below because truly, guys, it, it gets me every single time. Um, I heard it as a child and it just stuck with me through the years. And so make time for God because he misses his time with you. The other thing that I'm going to link below is a, an episode from City Exodus. And if you guys are not aware of them, they are this awesome ministry that goes around sharing stories of Adventist families who are moving from city life to country life. And there are just so many awesome stories of how God is leading his people. And I'm going to share one specifically below that has to do with this awesome family who made the decision uh, in 2020 to sell their home and to move into the country and just about how they created and changed their world so that they could experience daily morning and evening family worship in their home. And they really talk about what that did with their children. So I'm gonna encourage you guys to check that out. I'll link it below. Um, the other thing about time is sometimes we just need to think outside the box and be more creative with our time. We're a busy family. There are often times where we are out and running errands and dinner is on the go or we've been somewhere and we're coming back or we're going somewhere right after dinner. But we have to get creative with our family worship time. And so oftentimes we can even do family worship in the car. We know our memory verses. I've got them on my phone. We all have access to our phones. We can take pictures. We can, we can have things ready. We've got Bibles on our phones. Grab a, a small Bible to go. You can do these things. You can play worship songs in the car. You can pray in the car. All right. So I've already told you guys about music first, which is an awesome way to get some extra scripture songs or whatever else in to your life. You can use that when you're on your go, on the go. Um, if you are driving your kids to school in the morning, I'm not sure if you guys are aware of Audioverse, but they have like 15 minute, they're called seed pods. 
And what it is, it's a short 15 minute devotional for each morning that you and your kids can listen to. The next thing we're gonna talk about is our attitudes. I've got one, no lie, All right? But what God has asked us to do is to commit ourselves to worship. Remind yourself that God is worthy of worship. And it is a clear directive of God in scripture. So look at worship and family worship as a spiritual discipline that you have to learn and that you have to teach your children. And so we, when we do daily family worship, we are teaching our children that that daily time in worship and prayer and praising God is really important. Excuse number three, we're too tired. I know. By the time we get home from work, it's been exhausting. We're picking up the kids, we're making dinner. We have all these things that we still need to do at home before we can go to bed and showers and all the other things. What would have happened if Jesus had decided, I'm too tired to pray. I'm too tired, exhausted, emotionally, physically to carry the cross. I'm just too exhausted. Praise God that Jesus knew where his strength came from. He went and had his daily devotions with God. He went and he worshiped and he prayed and he communed with God. And that's where he found his strength. So just keep that in mind that guys, if Jesus was not too tired to die for you, don't be too tired to live for him. Excuse number four, not in the mood family problems, sin, ah, there are all these things that come at us every single day. And I know that when things are hard, if your kids have been fighting, if you've been fighting with your spouse or bickering, or if there's issues between you and a child, it can just be hard. But family worship is such a great time because you can come together and spend that time apologizing to one another, seeking forgiveness and praying for each other and bringing that reconciliation that only time with Jesus can do. So even if there's things going on, even if there's attitudes, bring it before God. Teach your children that as you come before God in the evening, you can come and ask for forgiveness and move on from that stuff and worship God together and just bring that unity back to your family. One of the other excuses I hear is, well, I'm not a pastor, I'm not a theologian, I don't know how to teach the Bible. Just read your Bible with your kids. Talk about what it means. Talk about what it says. Ask the Holy Spirit to lead you. If you're anything like me, I learn by teaching. That's one reason that I teach Sabbath school here is because I am learning so much. And I learn because I have to know it in order to teach it. And that's a great thing about it being a parent is we get to learn some of this stuff right along with our kids. And we learn it and we teach it as we teach it to them. And just know that you won't get better until you do it. So the more you practice, the more you're gonna be more comfortable, the more time you spend in God's word, the more you ask the Holy Spirit for discernment and direction, he will give those things to you because he wants to pour out those blessings on you and your family. All right. Some of the other excuses are, well, not everyone's here at the same time. Okay, do the best you can. If not everyone's going to be there because someone has soccer or someone's working late or whatever it is, just do it anyway. Because those who are there are going to get a benefit from it. And that includes you. When you have that consistent time daily that you are choosing to do family worship, you will start to see that other things are not as big of a priority as the spiritual life of your child. But if it can't be avoided, do worship with whoever's there. And then when the other person gets home, grab them and pull them aside and do a personal worship with them. Even if it's just at bedtime, do what you can. Don't let that time go undone. We want to pour in that spiritual um, motivation and encouragement into our kids each day. The last excuse we want to talk about is, well, we missed a few days. Well, we missed a week. Well, we missed, it's been like a month or two since we've done family worship. Guys, this is a great opportunity to remind your kids of what's important, to remind yourself of what's important, and to remind them that we serve a God of love and grace. And even if we've missed some time, 
we know that God still loves us and he wants us to join him for family worship and to ask the Holy Spirit to be there. And so we are going to just start retraining ourselves in these habits so that we can build this lifestyle of worship again. So again, I just wanna remind you, it takes 21 days to get a new habit and 90 days for a lifestyle change. So even if you just start now, you guys, we can do this. We can worship God with our children and grow those spiritual disciplines. And it's all about priorities, making time for what's important. And God, of course, is most important of all. So thanks for joining us. We'll see you guys on the next video.